Next, we've got Georgia, who works with the mushroom industry and is the deputy chair of the Australian Mushroom Growers Association. So well, welcome, Georgia, and uh, please tell us a bit about your role. It sounds like you do a hell of a lot of work in your <laughs> role and in the mushroom industry, which you're a very busy lady by the sound. I th- it sounds like everyone's very busy on this call. And that's the great thing about agriculture is the diversity that you see day to day. And no, no day is the same. Yes, yeah, so I'm deputy chair of our, our industry body, which is the Australian Mushroom Growers Association. But I've also got a mushroom farm in Diggers Rest in Victoria, which is about sort of 40 minutes out of the Melbourne CBD. So it means I can live in town and have a farm. So I see that as having best of both worlds. So I'm in horticulture, which means that I grow my crop indoors. And so I get to control the climate. And I actually designed my career this way. I've come out of, I was actually in tech and startups. I originally studied entrepreneurship over in the States, in Boston. And I had a startup and I sold that in 2014 and then decided, right, blank slate on my career. I want to grow something. I didn't want to do, I don't love factory farming. So I wanted to do something that was vegetarian a crop that could grow indoors for sort of climate change reasons and something that I can start to play in the alternate protein space. And so mushrooms ended up being it. And so I literally just Googled mushrooms and found some mushroom farms. So I'm a shareholder and bought this mushroom farm that I'm at the moment. We're the largest organic mushroom farm in the country. We do about 15 tonne of mushrooms a week and we supply the supermarkets nationally uh, as well as small grocers and catering and all sorts of things. So it's a, so it's re- mushrooms are interesting. We're a, a short cycle crop, so it's a 32 day crop cycle, very data driven, which helps with my sort of tech background. 65% of my staff have IT degrees actually. And so we're able to manage everything from our phones because it's indoors. And so with, I guess, technology being just common with younger generations, they come in here and just love it. You can pick it up very quickly. And so it's a great, it's a great industry to jump into if you're new and, and want to jump, get into farming. Fantastic, Georgia. And the mushrooms is such a, an amazing industry. And I live in the Hawkesbury and traditionally Hawkesbury has been the, the fungi capital. And the Tolson family uh, up there. Indeed. Look, you mentioned a couple of things there that I'm really interested about. You'd mentioned technology. And when you told me that most of your staff have a background, it also made me think about the use of technology in primary industries today. And I mm-hmm. think that's something that really isn't very evident from the outside looking in for, for the general population, especially young people thinking about careers. And yeah. I think technology really drives what we do in all of our industries. And, yeah. and in fact, I think that technology and the use of technology in primary industries is leading the way in terms of all the other industries out there. And maybe if you can tell me a little bit more about the use of technology in your industry and why technology is so important to agriculture today. I think technology is going to play a big part in how Australia can stay competitive as a country in agriculture with relatively high labour costs. That's It's around efficiency and, I guess, quality as well. If you're not measuring something, then it's hard to improve. And so we, because I've come from an entrepreneurial background, I really encourage that with our staff. So this sort of fail quickly mentality, give it a go and you've got to be in it to win it kind of attitude. We are able to run trials with either different genetics or having tinkering around with robots all based on, so in, with, in technology, when you're building new products, you have this build, measure, learn cycle. And that's what tech companies do. And ideally, they have a cadence where they do a few of those in a day. And so that's what we set up here. We have a thesis hypothesis that says, we think this is going to equal this and we give it a go. And so for me, it's about on-farm technology. So I want, if someone wants to build a new robot that's going to load a particular crop in a way, then they might want to go and learn a R, which is a coding language, to then ha- tinker around with the robot themselves. Um, I really encourage that behaviour on site rather than paying a consultant externally to, to come in and give us that particular robot. Instead, we retain that information on the farm and we grow and build on that. And so that's a big part of our business. And 
I, and it's not, we don't see it as a job replacement. It's as we expand, I'm literally, we'll double our footprint each year, actually. Um, we just bought about 3,000 square metres of concrete just to my left. That's why I'm in this funny office. It's a construction site. And so I, I need my staff that understand the crop to then be managing the automation side of the business as we expand. Yeah, so it's, it's a valuable asset and our biggest sort of competitive advantage as a business. Wow. So basically, the technology really drives efficiency and growth and improves the way that we produce products and in the short and long term increases the profitability. And I think the bigger picture in all of this is that we have an increasing population and need for food and we need to become more efficient at the way we produce that food. And so technology is leading the way in terms of solving problems. And I think that's really I think I, the key thing that I got from what you were saying is that a lot of what we do in all of our jobs, all of our roles here is problem solving. We have a problem and we're finding solutions for that problem. And really that is at the core, their core attributes and that I think are part of any career, but essentially in agriculture where we have an evolving way in which we solve the problems of increasing production, more efficiency, quality, and obviously managing the complexity of our industries and our products. Georgia, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, there's a, an industry organisation called Hort Innovation, and so they're a really good nucleus to, to contact just online. You can Google search them and uh, tell them what you're looking for, what sort of experience you're after, and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. There's a, a lot of farmers in Australia, and sometimes it's, confusing to find exactly whether you're going for an, a, a specific job sometimes you just want to chat to someone and understand the roles and what's available and so that would be a really good place to start i think that's exactly right yeah and it's knowing knowing which organizations to talk to and at what level whether it be knocking on the door of the local mushroom farm or going to the horde innovations website and and asking that question so that, that there's quite a variety there. 